well. I cannot remember the last time I blocked or I turned my camera on. I guess let's just start from the beginning, I suppose. So I'm, I'm not sure I've done any narration today. Sorry, quick, I'm such a quick terrible summary of the day. Yeah, so it started off a little bit earlier today than it did yesterday. We went to Round Pond Estate. I can never remember if they're like wineries, estates, like in the name. They're all something, cellars, whatever it is that they are. So we started off at Round Pond, which was something that I had found from a Google search. And it actually ended up being my favorite place that we went on the entire trip. We did their Vino and Olio tour. Well, they had a really big estate, actually. Do you remember how big she said it was? 430 acres. It's pretty big. Like, their plot of land just seemed like it went forever and, until you got to the mountains. And she's like, well, we don't own those mountains. So, pretty much everything but the mountains. But it was just so pretty. Um, and she talked about how they specifically focus on the fact that wineries are first and foremost farms which is really interesting. And so they actually had their own vegetable garden because they have a kitchen on site and they also grow their own olives because they are also an olive oilery, olive oilery. Olive mill. Olive press. mill, olive mill, olive, that's it. It's, they're an olive mill too. Um, we had never experienced an olive oil tasting before and we learned all about how to do that. They have these fancy little blue cups which are like the perfect size to fit in your palm. You heat the cups up with your hand and it helps bloom the flavors of the olive oil. Am I boring you? Mm -hmm. So anyway, we ended up uh, signing up for their Food Lovers Club, which is similar to a lot of you know, wine clubs. All these wineries have their own wine club where they will ship wine to your house uh, a couple quarterly, times a year. Usually. Yeah, quarterly. Um, but the this Food Lovers one is their olive oil and some other products that they make. Um, they, they do a couple of vinegars and like specialty flavored olive oils and some simple syrups, things like that. So we will be getting shipments for that quarterly, which is exciting. We definitely love wine, but we cook every day and I can't say that I drink wine every day. So I think this is something that we'll really use. And um, it was only, what, like $100 to sign up? It's like $100 per shipment plus no, shipping. We, it was free to sign up. It yeah, was. it's free to sign up, but you have to commit. Basically, we're coming away from this vacation motivated to spruce up our daily lives of cooking because we've realized that we are boring cooks. So, so, so anyway, we lingered there um, mostly just because we were really enjoying the company of our guide, Jenny. She was awesome. She had lots of great recommendations for us. I definitely feel like we would have been friends with her in real life. She was cool. So we went to St. Helena for lunch at a place called Market. We went on the recommendation of Jenny, but we really didn't spend a lot of time there because we ended up going to a tasting room after that, so we tried to get lunch as fast as we could. We went over to Oren Swift, uh, who had a hand in creating one of our favorite wines, The Prisoner, which I noticed I looked for a winery for The Prisoner when we were coming out here, and they don't currently have anything open. So I was like, well, I guess we ought to just try new things anyway, because that's why we're here. So I didn't really push it, but... Um, it was exciting for us to learn that this Oren Swift guy had his own tasting room. So we went over to Oren Swift and uh, had like five different wines. They were all reds. It's called their Scissors collection. Yeah, so they did a, it was a rock, a paper, and a scissors. We moved on from there to our next place, which was Joseph Sellers. Yeah, and we actually ended up getting to taste there for free because my parents are wine members, wine club members. So um, we didn't realize that they could call and arrange this, but at Round Pond, when we joined the food club, they said that um, we get six free tastings a year and that we can gift them to people. And I was like, I wonder if my parents can gift us our tasting, and it turns out they could. So we saved $150, which is awesome. So the cave experience that we had at Joseph Sellers was really you know, unique to any Thanks of the wineries. Well, yeah. 
yeah, it's definitely like this fancy storage house. Um, it's really like cold. They've got the lights strung out it's through not everywhere. It's cold, but it's tempered. Okay, difference. okay. Well, whatever. So it's appropriately tempered. Yes, you are right. So, but yeah, it was a it's a pretty cool smelling place. Obviously, you just got a bunch of white oak sitting around and just giving off a nice essence. And then we got to have our tasting back in there. So anyway, we wrapped up at Joseph Sellers um, and left there with three bottles. We got each of the cabs that we both liked and then also a bottle of Chardonnay. We figured, so my parents were just at Joseph Sellers, obviously, because they joined the wine club a couple months ago when they were out here. <sighs> and they purchased a case of the Zinfandel and on top of that they're going to be having wine shipped to them quarterly and so I figured better not stock up too much at this place because my parents are going to have it in abundance and they're they're always so generous so thanks mom and dad if you're watching this we appreciate your wine education and also your generosity and sharing it with us so you guys are great um the other fun exciting thing that made Joseph Sellers uh, a place that I liked is that they let their pets in and it's so I just love animals you went from being a sophisticated adult to a five-year-old when the pets <laughs> walked in the door <laughs> I think I like squealed you did and immediately I went from being like oh here's my nice wife to being like oh my god my child is here <laughs> Well, I can't help that they have that effect on me. That happens to me when I'm out in public, <sighs> too. And I, You were in public. Well, but I mean, like, actually in public, like at the farmer's market or something like that where people have their dogs with them. I, I typically have these conversations in my head where I'm like, don't say anything stupid. Don't say anything stupid. But I'm like, well, maybe I'll just do one little acknowledgement and then I pet the dog and go, hi. And I'm like... No, it sounded so stupid. It came out so stupid. You're such an idiot. So, I don't know. I think I just didn't think twice about it today because I no, missed my pets. You didn't. All right. Well, I didn't think it was that bad. It was pretty bad. But we decided to switch gears after Joseph Sellers. All the wine was delicious on this vacation, but we decided it was time to give it a rest and move on to some beer. So not a lot of people think of Napa Valley as a beer place, but we have actually had some pretty good beer experiences. So we headed about 30 minutes west of Joseph Sellers, which is in Calistoga, to Santa Rosa, where they have Russian River Brewing Company. I had actually never heard of this place until um, our neighbor brought us back a bottle of beer from there. Not just a bottle of beer. It wasn't like... He just brought us back a right, random no, bottle No, he beer. just, he knows that we have an appreciation for craft beer and he said that we had to try this one. So we did some research on it and it turns out Russian River Brewing Company produces uh, Pliny the Elder and Pliny the Younger. So, but if you do any research on like craft beer, look at rankings of them, you will consistently see these two at the tops of the list. Now, Pliny the Younger is actually much harder to get. They only release it once a year, but somehow our neighbor snagged a bottle of Pliny the Younger and he gave us one bottle of it to share. He signed a case, I think. <clears throat> Obviously, they didn't have it here tonight at, a, at Russian River, so we ended up getting an early dinner there and Craig had this giant flight oh my gosh it had 11 beers in it so but they were all pours. yeah little two ounce shot glasses basically yeah, definitely yeah. don't pass up going to Russian River Brewing Company so we decided to keep with the trend of beer and head over to Lagunitas which is in Petaluma they also have a location in Chicago and they're a pretty you know a pretty big brand so you've probably heard of Lagunitas before um, we had been to the Chicago location. It's totally different. That one in Chicago is like an industrial site, uh, you know, a giant facility. Basically a big giant warehouse yeah. slash production facility that happens to have a pretty cool tap room in it. Yeah, and they had like rafters that you could walk around in above all of the- Catwalks. Catwalks, whatever you want to call it. Not rafters, catwalks. Whatever. Um, that you could walk around like above the production with your beer. So mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. cool. 
This one was like a, a it beach surf It was literally called shack. Lagunitas um, Circus Top Brewing or something like that. It was literally like a bunch of tents outside. Yeah, they had like space heaters because it was all open air. So very, very different. But I think mm -hmm. this was the original location. And then we rounded out our evening with a trade brewing company, which was another recommendation from our guide at Round Pond, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Thanks, girl. We actually wondered if we were gonna see her there tonight because she said that she's been going there pretty much every night since she moved to downtown Napa um, a few weeks ago. So, but we got there just in time for last call and uh, got ourselves a flight and, and enjoyed all of the beers. Again, it Very was good. a lot of West Coast style IPAs. So anyway, we did a lot of beer tasting and now my liver is ready to relax and not touch any of the wine that we've purchased for at least a week. Something like that. So we are heading off to bed. I was hoping it was going to be a little bit early, but it's actually 1130 already. So we've got an early day for us in the morning. A little bit sad to be going home, but definitely ready to see my pets. Definitely ready to sleep in my own bed. I'm very bit sad to be going home. <clears throat> yeah, well, Craig's got to go to an office job Monday morning. I get to work from my couch, which is wonderful. With the so, pets. With the pets in my robe. It's great. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for watching. And as always, please hit the subscribe button if you're <laughs> liking what you're seeing. And until next time, we will see you later.